Hello on this divine beautiful day and it gives me immense pleasure to say that I am in one of the most powerful places on earth and I've been traveling all uh, the little Nityananda ashrams all throughout the areas of Karnataka and Kerala and I just reached the headquarters that is Kalingad and I'm standing right now in Nityananda ashram in uh, Kalingad Kerala so this is the entrance of the ashram and these are the caves that uh, Bhagwan built the 40 plus caves some say it is 43 some say 44 and 45 so I just called it as 40 plus caves this was done with some divine intent by Bhagwan, where he has deposited a lot of uh, highly vibrant energies which you can feel even today and he said that the seekers of the future are going to come and meditate here sages of the future this is what uh, Chidakasha says and that shows some divine intent of Bhagwan. and right in front of uh, this is the lake here what you can see this is the same lake where uh, on being questioned by the British officers where the money is coming for the construction of these caves because Bhagwan was doing it with a couple of laborers and he was paying them daily wages so Bhagwan said it is coming from this lake and when they asked for proof he dived in and brought in money from this and when they stretched out uh, hands to get the money he threw it back and said uh, go and get it if you want and this was heavily infested by crocodiles those days so that was one of his cute leelas and right on top there what you can see is the Samadhi temple this was uh, constructed on the uh, orders of Bhagwan when Bhagwan was in Ganeshpuri and his disciple here Jnanan Swami he constructed this Samadhi temple this was just before Baba leaving his body so this was a clear indication that uh, he had planned it very well to leave and I'll just walk up to the Dhyana I mean the Samadhi Mandir uh, which is considered to be very powerful because while leaving his body in Ganeshpuri Bhagwan said, uh, my body will be here, but I will be there in Kanyangad. So the body of uh, Bhagwan is in Ganeshpuri, in his Samadhi there. But this, dhyan, uh, this Samadhi Mandir is supposed to contain his subtle presence, as Bhagwan said. So I'll just move there. I remember using this video for the video I made for Jai Jai Arati Nityananda. This is the Holy Padukas. That's small temple here now we used to do a lot of uh, homas here by the Namudri Brahmins and uh, those years long back but now they have made this uh, very divine place the chant is going on you can see all these beautiful photos This is Jananin Swami, his disciple, who took care of this Kanyanada ashram.
He lived all his life here on the instructions of Bhagwan. I had a very strong belief that uh, Ganesh Puri and uh, Kanyan Ad play very divine roles and are two different part of the world which I feel very strongly Ganesh Puri is the worldly aspect and Kanyan Ad is the spiritual aspect where I call, I always relate Ganesh Puri to the Muladhara and Kanyan Ad to the Sastra. If you come here if you go to Ganesh Puri, you can see people with a lot of uh, prayers and desires and seekings for their well-being and uh, you know all the worldly things is being asked there. And if you come to here, Kanyanga, you find silence, the mana, and all the seekers here also only meditate. They just meditate. There's no seeking. There's no praying and all that stuff. So. It, it indicates the tattva of Sastrara. And you can see very much this caves, this Bhagwan built is the 43 or 44 caves, which represents the brain. If you look very closely, it is the skull. And it has a left chamber and right chamber in the caves. And above it is the Samadhi temple, which you just saw, where Baba is sitting in his uh, Abhaya Mudra. You know, and it's made out of uh, Panchaloha. So that's the top of the skull which indicates again the Sastrara. So it's very mystical. I, I, I have no one to speak on behalf of this, but these have been my strong belief whenever I come here. And that helps a great deal. So I was just seeing this view here. Baba built this. Baba built this uh, beautiful ashram very next to the railway tracks. You can see the railway tracks there. It just passes from here. The railway station is just one kilometer here. So it's very close to the railway station. And this is the Samadhi Mandir of Jnanan Baba. He lived all his life here following Bhagwan's instructions. And this ashram was completely built by him on the instructions of Bhagwan, who was operating from Ganesh Puri those days. And this is the old uh, Bhojanalaya, where, you know, Bhagwan used to himself cook with his own hands and feed children and the people here. Now they don't use it anymore, and now they have made this uh, Gaushala, this one. So the train always passes here. And there are a lot of stories with the Bhagwan and the trains. Seems like he loved the trains so much. There are a lot of stories you see here. I just wanted to share something because when I, I was traveling all this while uh, in the interiors of Karnataka and Kerala and I found many ashrams and people linked with uh, Nityananda. Out of that, I just yesterday evening was in one, one of the ashrams in Karnataka border and Kerala border and I was shocked. I can say literally shocked because I was amazed that such an ashram even exists there. There were quite limited people there and it was completely silence and the sage there or the siddha there or the uh, Namaskara. And, and the Siddha there or uh, what do you call it? the disciple of Bade Baba yeah, I was saying the disciple of uh, Nityanand Baba, the direct disciple of Nityanand Baba lived there and he spent a very silent and beautiful life, pure life. And his preaching was no publicity. When I reached there, 
आई वॉज अमेज कि सच थिंग्स डू एग्जिस्ट इवन इन टू डिज वर्ल्ड एंड हिज डिसाइपल नित्यानंद बाबाज डिसाइपल विच आई डोंट वॉन्ट टू टेक द नेम बिकॉज दे डू नॉट वॉन्ट टू टेक द नेम हिज डिसाइपल वॉज देयर एंड एक्सीडेंटली और ब्लेसडली ही केम अक्रॉस एंड दैट समाधि प्लेस ओनली and for the next almost 30 40 minutes he was just speaking at this very very profound truths he was just standing there and looking into the eyes into our eyes and speaking and speaking and speaking and i was amazed i told the other ashram people who were very very humble and so much pure they had tears in their eyes their bhava was so you know they had this bhava shuddhi amazing and while i was moving around with them they took us to the for food and all the they took care of us like children and when i said this ashram is not known they said that is how it is supposed to be i said that i do understand that's nityanand's tatva that's how the real deepest tatva of nityananda is and i i said the right kind of people do need this there is so much of seeking for truth and purity and divinity and for the highest truth there is so much of seeking people i see around uh, everywhere seeking for it <laughs> i told him that those people need it he had <clears throat> just one thing to say he said whoever needs it will reach here that's bhagwan's grace that's how everything functions publicity is not needed for it nothing is needed for it who has to be there will be there i was just touched by their humility and though the saint was there he was talking to me straight in the eyes he had profound truths when he asked me my name and i told him i'm jacob so he realized i was a christian and then he didn't speak anything else but the bible he was constantly talking to me about jesus christ he was ta- constantly talking to me about the truths that jesus lived not just preached he was constantly constantly talking about how important it is to live what we preach says otherwise there is we do not have any right to preach we got to live in that truth what is being spoken by anyone he said jesus did that bhagwan did that very very few of them did that he said be ready to face persecution for truth when you have the highest seeking for truth be ready to face all kind of persecutions for jesus said that to his disciples 11 disciples he said sell off everything give everything pick up the cross and follow me pick up the cross and follow me doesn't mean a religion christ had no religion he just said walk the path the cross was an indication a symbol of the path cross was a symbol of persecution cross was a symbol of struggles he said spiritual journey is not easy you need to crawl literally crawl to your destination to the light and jesus stood there watching for people who will follow him somebody had their wife somebody had their family somebody had their wealth somebody had their property so they said let me do this and come let me do that and come jesus walked away and those who wanted to follow him picked up the cross and followed him someone said my father is dead let me go and bury him and come jesus said one beautiful thing 
let the dead take care of the dead leave everything and fall dead in the sense dead in consciousness let those who are still not alive in consciousness take care of the dead i mean the physical body and all the rituals and whatever is attached to that and it's so profound these i had contemplated through some other saints also my gurudev was one who always spoke to me on jesus christ whenever i was in front of him he never preached any other thing he talked about the bible to me he talked about jesus christ to me he talked about his profound love for jesus christ because he was living the path that jesus lived and probably when saints meet me and find my name as a christian name they find this a beautiful opportunity to convey me the beauty of my own religion that i had embraced once it's not that it's not that i have left christianity but i don't belong to anything so i do not wish to have any identity about that but it's a beautiful thing to know that the saints whom i identified as a hindu or a muslim or some religion they spoke the truths of what one religion calls as theas but these people these these beautiful people know that jesus was just one beautiful soul who came to this planet to show the light and he did it and how many lives have been touched how many saints have been touched by him and in deep in this jungle this ashram the saint is talking about jesus christ to me i was so touched it was just beautiful i wanted to share that place for the people there in the ashram knew me <laughs> because i do have this blog about nityananda i always wanted to share the beauty of nityananda divine grace of nityananda with one intent one intent that people reach there and experience it but so they knew me and they were happy about the thing but when i said i want to share a word about this place not about anything else but just this place so that the right people can come here he said those who have to come will come here we do not wish anything they lived a very modest life i was amazed that in today's world this also can exist but then i could not resist but share this beauty with you that if your seeking is there you shall certainly reach such people or places that can guide you to the highest truth they spoke but nothing about the highest truth also i had the fortune of meeting one avduta while we were traveling i was traveling with somebody i don't know good fortune or what but he also was in a very beautiful state he was lost in his bliss unaware of himself or his own body we sat there for quite some time in the hut and then he looked at us and he too began speaking the highest truths what profoundness shatters the ego shatters all the worldly beliefs because timely there are some people who can look into your eyes and tell you what crap are you up to who have the courage to speak the truth and when they look into your eyes and speak the profound truth tears of joy tears of truth comes out in gratitude that the world is not yet as dry as it looks there are many hidden pearls in this world if our eyes are open 
the soul is open to receive it shall come i am not saying that i have done something great or have found something great but i am just overjoyed to see that in all the seekings that all the people are doing because i have so many friends so many seekers around the world i try to share these things only for those people because i have the worldly place where i used to live before i have friends and lot of well wishers from those areas and then after i came uh, in touch with my master i had another group of people who are walking this path so my intention was to blend these two worlds and bring the best that i have learned in the spiritual path to those people whom i knew earlier whom i had walked with and who are still struggling with lot of things in the world and they wish to get off but there is no way they can understand it better so these glimpses of these two phases of life i am hoping that it will touch your life in some or the other way i just wish to bridge these two things at the same time i have my friends on the path with whom i have enjoyed my journey spiritual journey so these might be a good uh, indication and help ultimatum is just one that we reach the light extremely grateful to my master for his eternal blessings due to which i survived today unable to travel and witness all the beauty of this place so i take your leave whatever just flowed i just poured my heart out if it helps i am very glad it does if it does not relate please ignore forgiveness for any errors if i have done or hurt you in any way take care bye